Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to No Code Conference 2021. My name is Andre Kirkland and I lead tech innovation and business design strategies at Twitter, really focused on how we can elevate the health of the user experience. Outside of that, I'm also a freelance web designer who uses no code platforms such as Webflow to create, design, and deliver transformational web experiences. I'm incredibly excited to share with you one of the personal passions of mine, which is digital transformation, as well as the role that no code plays in digital transformation. Getting into the storyline of it, the first point is that digital transformation is the anti hero of business operations. Now, you're probably wondering, Digital transformation, this is supposed to be a good thing. How is it an anti-hero? Well, yes, it, it is a good thing. Digital transformation is a good thing. It has its pluses, but also just like any anti-hero does, it has its faults, its more conflicts, et cetera. All the reasons we love anti-heroes, right? So we'll talk about that. The next point we'll get into is digital transformation, the super team. If you're familiar or if you're a fan of the NBA, you're, you know that super teams have received a heightened level of criticism over the past several years. And for those of you who may not be familiar with super teams, it's any time three or more of the league's top players come together to really create an unbeatable team, a seemingly theoretically unbeatable team. So we'll talk about the technologies that come together to make the team, the super team that is digital transformation. Now you're probably wondering, well, digital transformation, I see that twice, where is no code? That's the third point. We're gonna talk about no code being the tool that we need, but we don't deserve. Um, if you're familiar with the Dark Knight trilogy, you might be familiar or recognize the essence of this uh, statement here about kind of the hero that we need, but don't deserve. It's the same thing with no code. The reason why I point that out is because I'll be the first to say that I am lazy. Now, not in the kind of traditional sense that you might think of, but if there is a way for me to deliver transformational experiences, products, and work with my clients in a way that's easy, seamless, um, comfortable for both of us, and delivers products and uh, final goods in a way that is uh, much more quicker, then I'm absolutely going to take that way. And that's what no code uh, provides for us. So getting into the content here, I um, want to first take a step back and look at my career. Uh, just kind of give you some context about digital transformation and my relationship with it over the years. Uh, I started my career way back when with NASA as a co-op engineer, um, helping them transition from one tech platform to another for their commercial applications. Uh, upon graduation, I ended up joining Nike in their North America supply chain, where again, we were focused on using technology to transform their supply chain processes to enable new capabilities, new performances, um, better customer satisfaction, those types of business critical metrics and brand critical metrics that would be enabled and elevated through the use of technology. Transitioning out of Nike, I joined Anheuser-Busch InBev where I departed as the Director of Business Transformation where I was mainly focused on how do we use artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotic process automation, all these next level exponential technologies and apply them to business operations to elevate shipment performance and business metrics. So you may have kind of picked up a theme here that using technology and business operations and creating that harmonious relationship for business value add, that's effectively what leads us to the question of what is digital transformation? Anytime we have technology, and can use it for the benefit of business, that's what we're talking about as it relates to digital transformation. So taking a click down into that, what I like to call a digital love affair, tech meet biz ops, biz ops meet tech. We're using technology as an application into business operations to create a harmonious relationship that will elicit a certain favorable outcome, whether it's for the business or for consumers. So what does this look like? Again, integrating technology into business processes. This is gonna reimagine what business processes are, how we operate. We work in one way today or have a set of processes today that completely is flipped on its head tomorrow. So we have a whole new set of ways of working to uh, we'll say elicit again, certain favorable outcomes with our business partners or our clients. One important thing is that digital transformation is gonna look different for every company. Company A will we'll say realize digital transformation vastly different than company Z. There are certain we'll say, inputs into the reasons as to why. We'll get into that in a bit, but think of it as maybe one company is, is creating or serving or delivering a physical product. 
whereas another company is focused on digital goods and software and services. So digital transformation for these two companies is going to look completely different. And that's what is one of the main signatures of digital transformation. Getting into kind of what are these leading technologies, because you've heard me say transformation and digital and technology several times now. Well, getting back to that super team, these are three MVP caliber technologies that are really leading the edge of digital transformation. And they are artificial intelligence, robotic process automation, and cloud computing. So starting at the top with artificial intelligence, this is all about machines having the ability to, to think and to learn and make decisions based off of new data and new inputs. As an example of this, we have consumer and user analysis. Now you're probably wondering, well, how does consumer user analysis work with artificial intelligence? Well, one of my passions is sneakers. I am a huge sneakerhead. I, I love the collectibles, the shoes, et cetera. Don't ask me how many shoes I have because I stopped answering that question a long time ago. Anyway, anytime I'm interacting with the product, whether I'm adding it to my cart, selecting my shoe size or shirt size, favoriting a, a particular style, there is logic that will learn my behavior and my, 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 we'll say my taste for these types of products and then learn to predict or recommend products based on my previous spending habits, favorite habits, or just um, common habits. And so that's the idea of artificial intelligence and machine learning for business value add. The next point is robotic process automation. And this is really dealing with business operations. How do we take a manual process today and automate it for quicker, more efficient, at a higher quality click rate? So for example, for all the beer lovers out there, I'm gonna harken back to my days at Anheuser-Busch. So we had a process where if we had a truck that wasn't full and we could still put beer on that truck, we would have a team member manually look up what beer was available, manually look up how much was available, and then manually look up how much could fit in what containers, whether it was a keg, whether it was glass, whether it was aluminum cans, what size aluminum cans, six pack, 12 pack, 24 pack, etc. All these different business decisions that someone would have to manually look up, we can now automate through enhanced logic and modeling. So that's an example of robotic process automation. And now getting into cloud computing, this one is really the bread and butter because without cloud computing, we would have a very hard time enabling a lot of the digital transformation. And the reason why is because cloud computing allows us to gather and store and process so much data, so much information. Getting back to that example that I use about the Nike app, anytime I open that app, that's a data point. Anytime I click on a certain product, that's a data point. Anytime I add a product to my cart, pay for it, favorite it, what have you, that's a data point. Maybe some of you are like me who might pick up your phone, don't even remember why you why you picked it up, but hey, now that I'm here to the party, why not have a shot, right? So let me go open up my favorite social media app, Twitter, and start responding to DMs, comments, etc. These are all data points. Now, think about how many times a day you might do that. Now think about in a week, think about in a month. Now think about your immediate circle and how many times they might do that, those same activities. Imagine how much data that is when you look at the entire user base of some of these platforms and some of these apps. And that's what cloud compute, that's the power of cloud computing. We have the ability to store this information one and then process it in such a way that what used to take months, maybe even years, we can do so in minutes, days, maybe even weeks. And so that's the power of cloud computing as it relates to digital transformation. So again, these are kind of the, the three superpowers or the super teams of digital transformation. What I wanna call out here is that these are very organizational facing, meaning they drive a lot of value to organizations and companies. But as our good friend Thanos likes to remind us that all things are perfectly balanced or there should be perfect balance to all things, right? So with that, Let's take a look at the customer facing side of digital transformation and how it balances out the organizational benefit. Here are some of the, we'll say the ways digital transformation can enable customer experience or transform customer experiences. And it starts with digital identity and web presence, business to consumer interactions, and even accessibility. So when we talk about digital identity and presence, we're looking at websites and app journeys. So when I go to a website or when I open an app, can I quickly find the information that I need to? Can I quickly respond to that DM? 
Can I respond to a comment or like a comment, etc.? You know, how many times have you may have gone to a website, even in 2021, where it looks like it was developed for and in Windows 97? I'll raise my hand to that because I've seen it. And it's a different user experience when you have those types of outdated, uh, we'll say, web experiences compared to what consumers have grown accustomed to today. So that's an example of where digital transformation can help with consumer experiences. Clicking down into business to consumer interactions, this is all about customer support. How many times have you called into a help desk or for support and you're waiting an hour and a half, two hours, those horror stories of wait times versus if you go to a website, maybe you've seen a chat box pop up in the bottom right hand corner saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, how can I help you today? Well, that's a chat bot that is used to help consumers quickly and easily find the information they need to avoid those long five, 10, one hour wait times on the phone line. So again, using digital transformation to enable or enhance customer experiences. And this last point, accessibility, this one is actually one of my favorites. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Google Meets. It's, their, uh, it's Google's visual meeting platform. What you can do is actually turn on live captioning, where as I'm speaking with you, say right now, it will transcribe the audio as I'm talking, which is incredible. When you think about what benefit that has to maybe someone who is hearing impaired, that is incredible because this is in real time. This is uh, just an, an incredible technology that enables and transforms consumer and customer experiences. So at this point, you're probably like, wow, Andre, you know, digital transformation, it sounds great from a business standpoint. It sounds great from a customer standpoint. How is this anti-hero-ish? Well, just like it has in true anti-hero fashion, it has its positives, which we've gone over, but now we're getting into the meat of what makes an anti-hero. And it's those faults, it's those conflicts of morality, everything that makes them personable, um, kind of relatable in that regard, right? They're faults. So getting into that standpoint, let's talk about one of the first faults of digital transformation. It's cost prohibitive. It is an extreme investment in time, money, resources, all the things that we need in order for a business to successfully run or for us to work as designers to design and deliver client projects, that takes a significant amount of investment. One of the particular solutions I developed or, or led was over a million dollars. Not every organization has a million dollars to dedicate to a digital transformation project or a project in general, right? And so that's kind of harkens back to what I mentioned about Digital transformation will look different for every organization because of not only customers, not only industries or products, but also because of budgets. And so that's one of the reasons why digital transformation isn't as accessible as maybe we would like it to be to get those consumer value adds. The next point is that it's highly complex. When we're talking about end-to-end -end processes, one, those are complex. When you look at all the decision points that, that are needed to make a decision in terms of a business output, that's complex. That's complexity. Going back to that beer example. Hey, what beer do I have? How much can fit on this truck? What package? Is it keg? Is it 12 ounce cans? Etc. All these data points and all these questions add complexity to a certain process. And then you're stacking on a new technology on top of it to increase that complexity. So that's another component of kind of the downside or, or challenge or cost entry barriers uh, to digital transformation. The third and final point, what I like to call is the people pressure. And this is one of the grim kind of downsides of digital transformation and technology as a whole. If you recall, using that same example about adding beer to a shipment, if I have a person who is doing that process today and doing that activity today, and I replace that activity with an automated bot to do it faster, to do it more, at a higher rate, at a higher quality, with less mistakes, et cetera, then we're replacing that person with a bot, with a robot, right? And so if I don't have a specific avenue or space within my organization to move that person to in terms of, hey, maybe research and development, marketing, innovation, et cetera, then that person can unfortunately lose their job to technology. So again, that faults, those conflicts of moralities, all the things that make anti-heroes anti-heroes, the same thing applies to digital transformation. But here comes no code, right? Just like Superman, here it is to save the day. 
no code completely flips that script on its head and turns those, we'll say, faults of digital transformation into opportunities. So starting with the first, we're looking at how can we save money or what's that benefit, that cost favorability to us? We no longer have to add or, or hire expensive consultants or solution architects or developers to develop these codes, to manage the project timeline, to create these different initiatives and manage them to completion. So no code kind of shrinks all that budget and that expenditure and allows us to do so at a lower cost because we don't have to, we don't have to develop code. We don't have to spend six to eight months developing, testing, scripting, um, revamping, testing, et cetera. We can do that in minutes, seconds, days, et cetera, right? The second benefit I like to call is it keeps it simple because yes, we're still dealing with these, these complex processes, these decisions that we have to make. However, we're not dealing with those complex technologies. We're not dealing with the code that we have to develop and maintain and structure in a way that is sustainable and maintainable for organization. So it takes that complexity, complexity down a bit. Moving over to that final point, kind of what I mentioned about that people pressure, it actually empowers our people. It promotes innovation because it shifts the focus from the technology and the development and the code itself to now the focus is on the process. So as an example, if I'm a designer, right? I'm looking at, okay, what code do I need to learn in order to create this project or create this website for a, a client? Now I can ask, okay, what process do I need? What tools do I need such as Webflow in order to create this product. And that's what, what I mean by it fosters, promote, or it promotes innovation and fosters um, em, employee empowerment, okay? So as you can see, we've kind of flipped those kind of cons that we talked about with digital transformation before on its head to now with a positive spin because we don't have to deal with the challenges of coded uh, solutions. So I wanna get into a couple examples here. First is supply chain and tech ops. Um, in this space, I'm really dealing with structured uh, or semi-structured manual processes. And where I've seen technology and digital transformation most succeed is in identifying those uh, process variances where I'm automatically capturing, identifying, and documenting process variances. So take, for example, our web design. If I'm working with a collaborating with another designer, I classify a button a certain way. He or she classifies a button another, another type of way that creates a discrepancy or a variance in our project that now we have to either reconcile or which will take time to reconcile, or it's going to impact the performance of the site later on down the line. And so that's why process variances are very important to identify and call out as early as possible. The second point is again, that drag and drop to create bots where I'm no longer developing code, but have specific modules that I can use to drag, drop, to build that business logic, to create these automated processes, which is huge. The last point is scenario planning based on certain events. This is where artificial intelligence and machine learning can really help because we're taking information and making predictions based on what might occur in the future or based off of what information or what situation we're in right now, we can now run what if scenarios or what if analyses on this type of situation to make the best possible decision that we have or that we can uh, that we know to make at that moment in time. Okay, so that's supply chain and tech ops. Moving over to what might maybe resonate with most of you is web design and web management. This is when we're using no code platforms and no code solutions to style, mock up, and build these beautiful web experiences. Again, this might already resonate with you, but you're probably already scaling or see that seamless scaled collaboration working with your partners in a way that wasn't previously accessible because you had to develop or you had to manage code, et cetera. You have the means to rapidly and iteratively prototype different solutions. So instead of going into a code, managing or, or changing one particular line of code to see a, a different, we'll say, image or a different color on a certain button, you can do that seamlessly by clicking and dragging or clicking and entering a, a hex code or RGB, what have you, right? Again, no code. And then that goes into that last point of low effort website maintenance. I'm not sure if you're familiar with other web, uh, web design platforms, but plugin management is a true nightmare. <laughs> I mean, it is a headache after a certain time. 
And so no code solutions allows us that seamless or easy, low effort way to maintain these website platforms. So like I said, you probably are familiar with these um, or they, they may resonate with you in some way, shape or form, but that's the power of no code solutions and no code role in digital transformation. And that's to highlight this again, no code enables higher quality at a faster rate at a reduced cost. We no longer have to deal with complex code. We no longer have to deal with extended project timelines to manage and develop and test, et cetera. And we do so at a higher quality because we can see in real time the changes that we're making and don't have conflicting code pieces um, battling for each other, or uh, we'll say that will impact process or performance. So rounding out, um, in case I lost some of you in the middle of the presentation, you completely doze off, don't worry, I won't take it personal. Here are some cliff notes for you. We talked about digital transformation and it being the anti-hero of business operations. Remember the pluses that we talked about from an organizational standpoint, from a consumer experience standpoint, but then also the minuses or the cons as it relates to cost, complexity, and even employee morale. Then we moved into the super team of digital transformation, those leading technologies that are really paving the way for digital transformation and digital experiences. And then we round it out with the role that no code plays in digital transformation. Again, I'm lazy, so I don't necessarily deserve the tool, but it is a tool that I need because I am lazy. Okay. So again, as I said, my name is Andre Kirkland. It's been a pleasure sharing this information with you. Um, I'm always looking to and always open to connecting. So here's my contact information here on the slide. So if you see me, hit me up and we'll go from there. Again, thank you for attending the presentation. Take care, everybody.